Greetings everybody and welcome back. This time we're going to be doing some more top end work on this TRX 125 engine that I recently got. And uh, if you watch the channel you probably know when I got this engine it was kind of in this state. No, 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 no. So we're going to be doing a rebuild on this. And if you own these engines you probably know that the 125cc Honda stuff is really hard to find top end parts for it, like pistons, rings, and all that jazz. But I've been working with Dr. ATV out of Nebraska, testing some prototype pistons for the 87 and 88 TRX engines, and also the 84, 85 TRX and ATC engines. And if you know my channel, a couple weeks back, I put the piston in this guy, and this happened. So that one's looking great so far. I'm gonna put this in a bike in the near future and make a video. But if you wanna see the rebuild of this, you can click on this video. But let's get back to the 8788 engine. Now the state this engine was in when it made this noise. No, 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 no. I thought we had a rod bearing out of this engine, but luckily we did not. It actually just sucked a screw down the intake and the um, combustion chamber looked like this. So yeah, it ended up not being anything serious. So I just ended up rebuilding the jug here. Took my little valve reamer and I did a three angle valve job and everything. There's a little bit of, a little bit of chunks right here where the screw hit. I dremeled those out, but luckily it didn't hit any of the valve seat area. So after I rebuilt this, I put new valves in it, lapped everything in, everything seals up great, so. I think once we get this back on this engine with Dr. ATV's top secret piston, we may have a runner here. Okay, let's put these wrist pin clips somewhere where I'll lose them. Speaking of wrist pin clips, where's the wrist pin? All right, let's take a look at this piston. It looks like a piston. All right, so we got the rings installed. Gaps look good on everything. What side is the intake side on these guys? Bump, that guy. All right, intake, intake. And we are in. Let's put that right there to hold that chain. There we go. Hey, look what's on there. Yeah, if you're interested in the teardowns of these 8788 or the 8485 engines, that video I was watching is a pretty good reference. It's by a guy on a, has a YouTube channel called Bigfoot Bikes and Brews. I'd totally recommend checking it out. Yeah, that's Bigfoot Bikes and Brews on YouTube. A lot of good, a lot of good videos over there. I'd highly recommend that channel. The guy's a little bit weird, but. Ooh, that dome is really high on here. Dr. ATV said this was going to be a little bit of a high compression unit once we're said and done. I'll have to make sure that we test the valve clearances before we fire this thing up. Hmm. Well, gosh, we'll have a high compression 130cc engine in here. That's going to be great. Now, this is the head gasket that came with my rebuild kit. Standard bore. Dr. AT was thinking on this style of gasket, we might want to go with a 57 millimeter gasket. So that is what we'll do. Okay, so the head gasket's on, guide pin, guide pin, guide pin. This is the top end camshaft oiling stud. So we need to remember to put an O-ring here. Okay, got to make sure the little oil plug is right there. And the weird thing is, yeah, there's no gasket for up here. I don't know if Honda just machined things that great. Or 
this thing had RTV on it when I pulled it apart because somebody previously tried to rebuild it. I don't know, I'm kind of leaning towards that. A little silver RTV, I might just put the littlest little bit of RTV around there. I think I'm going to do that. Got the cam all oily. Let's little pin there that should drop down into the head. Should drop down in there. Dropped on in there. Really close here. Very optimistic feeling. And on the top part of the head, I did put a very, very, very light skim of some silver RTV on there. I'm not sure if that's recommended or not. Let me know in the comments below. Well, let's turn this thing over a couple times and make sure all heck isn't going to break loose. Sounds good. Cam chain tensioner, side cover, intake. Torqueless head bolts, we should be really really close to getting this thing running feels good feels good feels good Yeah, I can't have this freshly painted engine and this cam cover looking like this. So, yeah, this thing was pretty beat up. I, I soaked it in some Easy Off oven cleaner for a while. I'm going to take it over to the polishing wheel and get it all mirror shiny. And then we'll pop it on. There. Much nicer. Come on over and get off there. You know what? I haven't torqued the head bolts down yet. Probably do that. So let's set the valves. See if we can get it at top. On compression stroke, yep, yeah, should be good to go. Yeah, those are loose. Zero, 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 three. Oh, yeah, that's really loose. Wow, this thing must have made a lot of noise. Well, of course it made a lot of noise. There was a freaking screw in the combustion chamber. Let's get this thing wired up. Oh, you know, I should probably change the oil in here because I have no idea what is in this thing. And now for wiring, I just got a cheapo Chinese pit bike wiring harness. I will just wire this guy up to it and get her on. Let's see here. Charging, CDI. What all we got here? CDI, where's the five pin? Right there, pow, rectifier, come on, why aren't you going in? There, rectifying, I got a coil, should be one of these two here, here we go. Nope, those are the engines. Coil, 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 where are you? Starter relay, 
don't need that for now. Okay, that should be all there is to it. Oh, actually, I need to hot wire these two together. I think this is a safety switch, green, yellow to black. But all of our connections down here, so they go to the engine. Blue will go to the blue white will go to blue white pulse coil. Green will go to the ground coming off the engine. Red black stator, and then white yellow will go to white yellow. That should be all I need. Don't need to worry about this. That's our neutral and reverse. Make that work together, and we'll make this fire. Yeah, these Chinese pit bike wiring harnesses you can get off eBay for like 25 bucks with the CDI electronics and everything are pretty darn easy to hook up to these Honda engines. Basically everything coming off the engine, just match up the colors with all the bundles here. So we've got like blue stripe goes to blue stripe, red black stripe goes to red black stripe, white and yellow go to yellow, yellow on the engine, green goes to green, piece of cake. Everything else you just kind of plug in where it needs to be. You have your coil, simple, green, black, yellow stripe. On some of them, like this one, there is a black and a green yellow. That's a reverse safety switch. I just chopped those, soldered them together to make it run um, always. You want to do that if you can figure out, or if you're trying to start one of these and uh, you can't figure out why you're not getting spark, this is most likely your issue. You need to connect the black to the yellow green so now i should be able to ground my spark plug just right up here and give it a pull and i should should have spark let's see if i can do this with, while holding the camera come on can you see youtube is hard oh man we got compression though hey, i think i saw spark oh yeah we got spark bingo all right Let's go get a battery and some gas. Let's steal the carb off of the 84 that I was testing. Yeah, if you want to see this 8485 ATC 125 engine get rebuilt, it's that video right there. This is using Dr. ATV's 56.5 uh, millimeter piston. It seems to run great. And I'm going to be testing this engine out uh, in the near future on an, on a bike. So be sure to subscribe if you want to see this thing in action. Well, we got some oil in it. We got spark. We got gas. Yeah, the original oil didn't look too bad. There was no metal chunks in it or anything like that. And it's not foamy, so there's no uh, antifreeze in it. So that's, that's good. Where's the throttle? This all one-handed here. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to do a little break in here. I'll let it run with a muffler on it. And uh, fair warning, this muffler is full of all kinds of junk and oil from before I rebuilt this. So I'm pretty sure this is going to just mosquito fog the whole shop. So we'll see if that happens or not. Yeah, hit that. Oh, look how nice that sounds. Wow. It's almost like I'm learning how to do these top ends. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. 
Wow, that's fantastic. Not smoking too bad out there, but. Yeah, I'm gonna let this idle, cool down. We'll crank up the RPMs a little bit, let it idle, cool down. Crank up the RPMs a little bit more, let it idle, cool down. And then at that point, if it's not leaking oil, I'm gonna put it in this bike. Oh, running out of gas. Yes. Now how cool is that folks? We've got a winner. This thing sounds great. And you know what? In the near future, I'm going to be replacing old Smokey and old Leaky in my XL125 Hondomatic with that guy. So we're going to have the 130 high compression engine going in to replace the 125cc beat engine. Yep, I'll have a video of that out in the near future so we can test out this engine's performance in that bike. But that's gonna come at a later date because I got no more time this week. So if you wanna check out some more videos from Bigfoot Bikes and Brews, you can click the video on the left or on the right or just spin over the channel and check out what I got going on over here. See you next time. All right, I hope you liked this episode of Bigfoot Bikes and Brews. Click on one of the videos here if you wanna see some more. And please click on the Bigfoot button to subscribe to the channel and join in on the fun. See you next week.